Hey Nancy Drew fans, we're back with Book 8, Nancy's Mysterious Letter. Published in 1932 and revised in 1968, my cover has a very 1960s style Nancy. She's got big pixie eyes and she's wearing a very trim pink suit. This is the first in the series written by Walter Kerrig. He's another author for The Syndicate, and he temporarily replaces Mildred. Walter doesn't last long as the author for two reasons. First, his manuscripts need a lot of extra editing, but also he has trouble keeping the secret that he's an author for The Syndicate. This story again starts out with some stolen letters, and because of this crime, Nancy learns that there is another Nancy Drew out there. This one's an actress, and she's just come into a large inheritance. This alternate Nancy Drew is missing, and our Nancy, with the help of cousins Bess and George and boyfriend Ned, set about to find her. Nancy shows some fantastic detective skills in this story, including deciphering a message that is hidden in Shakespearean verse, but she also shows how tedious detective work could be back then. She spends an entire afternoon calling all of the Wilsons in the New York City phone book, and she also spends a lot of time driving around between witnesses asking them the same questions because they don't really have a good way to get in touch with her. Nancy and the girls do also have some fun when they go up to Emerson College for the weekend to watch Ned kick in the big game and attend a dance. On the way there, Bess and George share this typical exchange. Presently, Bess said, between now and the time that you see Nancy Smith Drew at the play, let's talk about something besides the mysteries. I'd hate to meet Dave with my mind full of clues and crooks. George could not resist a jab at her cousin. That's better than nothing. A couple of scenes seemed really off to me until I remembered our male author. There's a seven-page description of the big football game, including a lot of detail on the action. When the ball was snapped, Ned rolled back and to his left. Emerson's left end faked out the opposing halfback and dashed toward the corner of the field. Ned rifled a pass. It was a perfect pitch. The end caught it in his upstretched arms and fell across the goal line. Also, when Nancy perfectly parallel parks, Ned admits that he could not have done a finer job himself. For outfits, Nancy wears a pale blue evening gown to the big dance. Here's an illustration of her in the gown. She's trying to get out of harm's way because a curtain is falling on her. Later, she's in disguise, and she's wearing a reversible trench coat, sunglasses, and a paisley patterned scarf tied around her head. Nancy exhibits a new characteristic here as she's increasingly humble. When a witness asks if she and Ned are detectives, the young people began to laugh. Then Ned said, I'm not, but Nancy Drew is the best girl detective in the whole world. Don't you believe him, Nancy said quickly. I have solved some mysteries, I'll admit and I enjoy it, but I'm sure there are many other girls who could do the same. Detractors of the series often complain about the elitism that's rampant throughout, and there is definitely some of that happening here. Nancy, Bess, and George hop on a plane to New York City at the last minute, and earlier in the story, Nancy has no trouble paying $10 for a clue. There are several good meals in this story, including hot cocoa and homemade cookies, and also a late night dinner that Hannah whips up of chicken and lettuce sandwiches, fresh cut up fruit, and chocolate cake. Ned is described as Nancy's boyfriend throughout the book, but clearly she doesn't have any big plans for their future just yet. When she stops the other Nancy from making a big mistake, Miss Drew turned her tear-stained face toward Nancy. You've been so wonderful, but she added sadly, there'll be no wedding bells for me and I had counted on my marriage so much. Oh dear, I don't know what to do. This girl really pours her heart out, but Nancy can't even think of a response to comfort her. She's already thinking about her next mystery. Next up, The Sign of the Twisted Candles. <laughs> 